Okay, this is a 2000 Dodge Neon that we're working on. And it is a 2.0 liter engine, regular four cylinder. This is the starting system diagram. We have a no crank situation. And it helps to know what you're dealing with before going to the car. This is pretty typical. And what I would do is pull a diagram, see what kind of system it is, see if there's some type of anti theft. Does the computer control it? Is the computer involved? Is it a basic starting system? And of course, wiring diagrams key. And we can see right away on this diagram that the computer is involved in this starting system. So I think maybe the first thing would be, let's look at the relay. Let's see how this relay functions. Because the starter is a typical starter. You're going to have, this would be the load side of the starter right here. And we would call this side the, the control if you want to call it for the starter itself. This would be the windings that for the solenoid that would make the motor function. Your heavy current would be on this circuit. So typical starter got two power feeds. It's grounded on the housing, which is the block. You know, that's enough, really enough information. You could start right there if you wanted to go down to the car and do some voltage measurements, crank it over, check this one. Make sure you have 12 volts here when you're cranking. Make sure you have 12 volts here when you're cranking. Now, reality would be that it won't be exactly 12. Depends on system voltage. And it's pretty common for the control side, this side, to be lower voltage because you have a few components it has to go through. You're going to have a slight voltage drop here. You have a lot more wiring. There's a lot of components that the control side has to travel through. Control side of the starter that is so I don't want to be confuse the control side of the relay with the control side of the starter but in any case this won't be exactly 12 volts it's pretty common to see a half a volt to a volt less on that starter solenoid wire than it is the starter load wire so I would say if we went down to the car and saw 11 and 12 I would be okay with that Another important aspect would be even though this wire is hot all the time, we want to make sure that when we're testing this wire that this switch is closed and the starter is cranking or we are at least holding it in the crank position. Reason for that would be that is a loaded circuit test and that will ensure that we have no issues in this load side wire. Make sure we're doing that loaded. That's fundamental starting system checks. Car doesn't crank, hold it in the crank position for all tests. That's the bottom line. All right, let's go to the relay. How's this relay function? This is actually going to tie in very nicely to where we are right now in class. We're going to be doing sections two and three. Section two is switch inputs. Section three is what I call transistor drivers and output solenoids. That's our subject for this week. And within section three, I talk about output controls. And what this is right here, what we're looking at in this picture, this is an output control. In other words, the computer is controlling this relay. How is the computer controlling it? One of the first things we do in section three is we talk about identification. How do you know? Because there is, no, there is nothing inside of here that tells you what it is. One of the things you need to know is that's a transistor. There's a switch that's going to control this relay. That would make sense. We're going to switch it on, switch it off. So inside of this relay control, inside the computer is some type of switch. The question here is, does it apply a ground or does it apply a power? And to answer that, what we do is we follow the wire, what I have listed in my book, you follow the wire that does not go to the computer. So this wire goes from the relay to the computer. And what I'm telling you is there's nothing in that wire that's going to tell you the polarity of that circuit. We don't know if it's power. We don't know if it's ground. We know the computer's controlling it, but we're not sure what the polarity is. It's real simple. You follow the other side. You follow this other side. It goes to the ignition switch. When the ignition switch is moved to the start position, you can see that that's attached to a fuse. So that makes that a positive feed. So if you have a coil of wire, which is what's inside of a relay right here, if you have a coil of wire that's going to make a magnetic field, that's what it does. Makes a magnetic field. You need a power and a ground for that to occur, don't you? 
So if you have the power side of that coil figured out, and we said the power side is this mm -hmm. side, then what does that make this side of the circuit right here? That is a ground. This is section three. This is what we're going to be doing this week. So this ties right in. This case study for this car ties right into this week's subject. So we have a computer-controlled starter, and the computer controls the control side of the relay. We'll call this the control side. Sorry. We'll call this the control side of the relay. That's control side. This is the load side of the relay. And we don't want to get those terms mixed up with what I said before, which was control and load side of the starter. This is the control side of the starter or the side that's going to do. That's the solenoid side of the starter, the lower current solenoid side. And this is the load side of the starter. So we don't want to get those mixed up because it's kind of confusing that the load side of the relay is involved in the control side of the starter. Does that make sense? So maybe I shouldn't have called this right here the control to begin with that's the starter solenoid or the s post of the starter you can call it the control if you want to why do you think the computer would be involved in the starting system on this car i mean what's the point if you think about it why not just take this wire and ground it which would be the way a lot of systems are designed if that was grounded we could crank it over and the relay would do what it's supposed to do and the car would would crank we have a no crank situation. Why make the computer involved here? Where is the neutral safety switch, you could call it? This would be one. One of the reasons that we would have the computer involved here is a neutral safety type issue where we don't want the car to crank in gear. Do you see in this picture, I don't, a park neutral switch or neutral safety switch? I don't see one here at all. Do we need to have that condition on this car? There needs to be a neutral safety or park neutral switch involved to prevent the car from starting in gear. So one of the things the PCM would be involved with here would be in that function. There's going to be a park neutral switch that's going to be an input into this computer that we're not seeing on this diagram. And that's going to need to be in park or neutral. That's something that we need to check. If the computer sees that we're in gear, even though you're cranking the engine over, is it going to provide a ground for that relay? And it won't. That's going to be section two. So this is kind of nice. We're doing section two and three within this car. This part neutral switch is going to be something that we may need to check. The other reason the computer would be involved on this car would be anti-theft. Factory alarm system. Somebody breaks in the car trying to steal the car without the, the proper key and computer's not going to allow it to crank. It'll, it'll also cut injection pulse and do other things too, but that would be the other reason we make cranking systems, starting systems, computer control, anti-theft systems. So where do we start? We didn't really need to start here. We could have went right down to the car and we can check our two positions here and here on the S post. This would be the smaller gauge wire. This is the S post of the starter or the solenoid wire. Those are always smaller gauge. And then the heavy gauge load side right here. That's where we're going to start and see what we have. Okay, 2000 Dodge Neon with a no crank problem. This came from a body shop. The car was in an accident. Not that that's related to this no crank situation. A little bit of vehicle history is the... The shop brought it to us with a, a wire right here. This is the S post wire, the solenoid wire. Has been bypassed, or at least adapted into the existing S post wire. That's the solenoid wire. And the way they're getting the vehicle to start is they are taking the end of this with the key on. They're taking the the end of this wire and they're touching it onto battery positive with the key in the run position and it cranks up and the vehicle will run. So that does answer a lot of our, maybe not a lot, that does answer some of our variables as to a vehicle that does not crank. So some fundamentals that you want to do with any starter would be check your two power feeds during cranking, important that we do it during cranking because we want to have a loaded circuit. 
we want to check our two power feeds. So our load side, which would be the starter heavy cable, the BAT post, and then the starter solenoid S post wire, which is less current flow or low current. We want to check both of those during cranking. We want to have loaded circuits. So I have my yellow adapter already connected. And that's right here in the picture. You see my yellow lead for my multimeter is connected. And for the S post being that I already have a way to do it easily, I'm just going to take that S post wire and use their existing jumper to get a voltage reading off of the starter solenoid circuit. What we should have, we should have power feed on both of those during cranking. Okay, looking at the yellow trace, we have 12.3 volts on that circuit. We have a little bit of oscillations in there because I have a battery charger on this, so ignore those. The green trace is my S post or my solenoid circuit and you see right now we have zero volts on that and what I want to do is I want to crank this I'll keep you focused on the screen here while I'm cranking it we'll see what we have okay I am holding this in the crank position right now I just let off and you saw we had no change in that circuit whatsoever. And so what that tells us is our heavy BAT post feed is good and we have an issue on the control side of this starter. Now we already knew that with this jumper being connected, but those are the steps that you wanna go through. Those are some fundamental starter checks. Now another thing that you would want to do is check the starter ground, which is on the housing, but the symptoms of this vehicle really dictate that we don't have to do that. And the reason for that is when this S post or solenoid post is energized, the vehicle cranks. So we know we have a good ground on this starter. That's really not a problem here. I have another video showing a bad starter ground on a Nissan. You guys feel free to watch that one. And that one ended up being a block ground issue. We don't have to go in that direction on this one. So we found we had zero volts here. Right, we have 12 volts here, and we know our problem is on the starter solenoid side. So we're going to go and do the checks next at the engine starter motor relay, and that says in the PDC. That's the power distribution center. That should be under the hood. I think Chrysler was nice enough to label the top lid on the box for us so we can find that relay. And what we want to do, when you, if you look at this diagram, there should be two power feeds, and this is a, a basic rule you follow for any relay. Two power feeds, there's going to be a control side power feed, and there's going to be a load side power feed. If you see the load side, this one's going to be hot. This is hot all the time. Okay? And this one is hot when? This one's hot in crank. Now, given that this vehicle has a jumper connected, let's do a little reasoning with this before we do our test. This vehicle has a jumper connected to the S post and just sitting there. And the owner is jumping battery positive to this, and the engine is cranking over and runs. He brought it to us that way. Does that help us with any of these checks up here? Does that tell us, any, does that tell us anything about anything up there at all and really truly it doesn't. it doesn't we're bypassing that whole thing we don't know we don't know if our issue is going to be on this side we don't know if our issue is going to be on this side could we have just a blown fuse in the power distribution center you know it does say on the dashboard on the cluster it says fuse it's the first time i've ever seen that it actually literally says fuse so it could be that and this fuse, one of the things you want to think about if it's a blown fuse is wouldn't you think other circuits would be affected by that? I would think so. But if you look at this diagram, and Mitchell's been pretty good at giving us this information. If you look at this diagram, I see solid lines. If, if this fuse powered other circuits, this red wire right here would be a dotted line to this splice. And that dotted line tells you 
that there are other circuits that are involved with this. And because it's a solid line, I'm saying that that fuse could be blown, and that's our whole problem with this vehicle. And it does say fuse on the on the dash. So something to think about. We'll, we'll check that for sure. But this looks like to me that that's it. That's all that this wire is going to do. And in fact, it's going to be both sides of this relay are going to be dead if that fuse is blown. This one's hot all the time. This one's hot and crank, but the source is the same, isn't it? it? Comes from this fuse. We have to crank it to send it on the control side of the relay, but it's still the same circuit. So some relay checks are coming up next. One of the things you want to look for is two power feeds. There's one right here. There's one right here. And that's pretty typical on any relay. You're going to have a load side power and a control side power. That's where we're going to go. It's a four pin relay. And really, we can just use a test light and just touch each of the four pins while we're cranking it. While we're cranking, we should have two powers. Look at the, look at the picture. If you're not cranking, you're going to have one power. It's right here. When we crank it, we're going to have two powers. In those two locations, that light should light with the relay removed. That's where we're going next. Okay, nice of Chrysler to give us a legend on this power distribution box. So it makes it pretty nice. And our starter relay is this top one right here. And so it makes for a nice location. That's going to be this one. We'll pop this relay out. Just use a basic test light. And again, we're looking for two power feeds during cranking on this next test. Okay, just want to show you guys an important step here when you're doing any kind of voltage testing, whether using a voltmeter or a test light. My test light's connected to what we will call a good ground. It's the strut tower bolt. And one of the things that people forget to do is check the test light to make sure it lights. So I'm going to show it to you on this hot feed on the power distribution box. And I'm touching that right now and my light is not lighting. This is not a problem with the box. It's a problem with my test light ground. So very simple test. Let me wiggle this ground now. Very, very simple test is overlooked in this field so often that make sure that your meter or test light has a good ground or contact before you go ahead and do any testing. So there you go, test light's good. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to these four pins on this starter relay location. And what I'll do is I'll pop this other relay out of the way so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. And you see this power distribution box is loose. Uh, we did not do that. I believe this is probably the result of the accident and things are broken, are broken in here. But anyway, all right, so the four pins, Something else we want to be careful of is we do not want to take this big fat test light tip and put it down into those relay contacts, those female contacts, and spread them apart. That's another rookie mistake. I see people do it all the time. Don't do that. Um, what I'm doing is I am touching these pins on the side and I'm making sure that I'm not spreading the terminals and I'm looking for my test light to light. So. You see on that pin that that test light is not lit. That's one of the four. There's two. Test light is not lit. There's three. Test light lights on that one. And then the fourth one, no light, which would be the way it's supposed to be with the key off. So what I want to do now is hold it in the crank position. And I'm going to double check these four pins again. And I'm not really worried right now which pins which, just that I should have two power feeds here. You're in the crank position holding it there. All right, so we're holding it now in the crank position. I'm gonna double check these pins. Nothing there, nothing there. Got a light there and nothing there. So what we know right now is we are missing one of the power feeds to this relay and the one that we're missing is the control side power feed from the ignition switch. Okay, so I'm inside the car now and the test we're gonna do 
being that we're missing control side power feed to that relay is we're gonna check our control side power feed wire, the yellow wire up here at the ignition switch. And again, I wanna emphasize this. Um, I am using a test light and I relocated my ground inside the car. And even though this is on a metal bracket, we still have to make sure that this test light has a good ground. One of the locations you can use is we can use the data link connector. Very convenient that uh, pin 16 is this bottom right corner and you see that my light is lighting and uh, the only reason I'm doing that again is that tells me that that test light has a good ground and that the rest of my tests will be valid. Okay I'm underneath the column Take my test light connected to this yellow wire. This is my crank circuit. Can you crank that for me? Okay, you see my test light is not lighting. And what that's suggesting to us is an ignition switch problem. We wanna make sure that the feed wire coming in is good. And that's this one. It's the red wire right next to it. And that is good. And what that says is this is a bad ignition switch. Okay, one of the things I like to do when it comes to a situation like this is to just check the rest of the circuit and make sure that it functions. Knowing that this ignition switch sends power to the control side of a relay, I should be able to take a test light connected to battery positive and touch on this yellow control wire and make this engine crank so I'm going to do that okay you see when I touch the column my lights lighting so test light connected to the battery positive touch on the yellow wire and right now that should be cranking the engine over why is it not Something to think about on this car was the PCM is involved in the starting system and you're going to want to have the key on because you need the computer powered up to provide a ground for this relay circuit. So I'm going to turn the key on, make sure my dash lights are on, and I'm going to redo that test. Okay, now key is on. Test light the battery positive. Touch on this yellow wire. There you go. It cranks and runs. And what that just told us is definitely have an ignition switch problem and that the rest of our circuit from the ignition switch all the way out, the relay, the wiring, everything else is good. Hey, something else too with that bypass test, what that tells us is there's no issues with the engine computer, that it is grounding that relay circuit like it's supposed to be, that there is no part neutral switch problem or anything like that. So it's a good test. Something else too is we could have done that test out here. You see I have in this picture a little hook tool that we're underneath the power distribution box. We're actually on the yellow wire right here. And I could have taken my test light to battery positive. Again, checking my light and making sure that, that it, it lights. When I touch the ground, touch the same wire. Again, with the key on, and what that tells you is, at least from out here, the relay and everything else is functional. And then we would have still had to do the same test I showed you inside the car, which is check the ignition switch. Same test though with the key off. Test light, touch it on there, no response. And so it's one of the things you gotta think about when you're doing this bypass type testing, which is definitely one of my favorite things to do is to bypass systems and make it work like it's supposed to it just makes you that much more confident about what you're doing but think about the variables if your bypass test doesn't work you have to think about your variables
Okay, just to review this and wrap this thing up on what we did, kind of go over each thought process or each step. Vehicle comes in, it is a no crank, and what we found was that the garage put a jumper wire in here, and what they were doing with that jumper wire is they were jumping it to battery positive with the key on to make this thing start. Then it would start. So that much there told us some stuff that told us that our load side of the starter was good and we really didn't need to check that. We did anyway. And it also told us that our starter ground was good and that we didn't need to check that. What it didn't address, of course, would be the rest of the circuit, the rest of this control circuit, which would be all of this area is still in consideration with that jumper in there. So our next step, we went to the relay, plugged in some relay fundamentals, and, and those would be that we're looking for two power feeds, just about on any relay. There are some variables where you can have a relay control the ground of something. So if that was the case, this could be this could be a ground wire and then this could go to ground and it could be a switched ground on a relay. That's not common, but it could be done that way. If that was the case, you would only have one power feed going to the relay, but excluding that, every other type, you're going to have two power feeds. Remember that. It's going to help you. Two power feeds for a relay. Control side power, load side power. The load side of a relay is the switch side. Control side is the coil side. We disconnected the relay, and what we found just using a test light is that this one right here, and our test light was connected to ground, this one was lit all the time. Whether the key was off or the key in the crank position didn't matter. That one was lit all the time, and then nothing else was lit on the relay. So we knew our load side was good, and then our focus was now on the control side of the relay, and so our next step was we went inside the car and checked this yellow wire for a power feed using a test light again connected to ground and what we found test light connected to ground was that this test light did not light and that right there suggests the ignition switch is bad of course before ever condemning the ignition switch, you would want to make sure that this red wire coming in here has power and that maybe this fuse is blown. We know this fuse was not bad. Why? Because at our relay, when we had our test light connected to ground on this wire, it was lit. So we knew that fuse was not bad. But something to consider. So what I did, Took a test light inside the car, not to battery positive, sorry, to ground, and this red light lit. So that tells me that my feed going into the ignition switch is good, and our feed coming out when this is in the start position or crank position was bad. No light here. I have a light here, bad ignition switch. And, and the remainder of this we really did just to make ourselves feel better about calling an ignition switch, and that was to take test light to battery positive, and we used that test light to support enough current flow to energize the control side of that relay, provide the magnetic field that's going to close this switch, and the engine cranked over. What we noticed was when the key was off, it didn't work. And that is because this PCM is involved in the circuit with the key off. The computer is not powered up, so we're not going to have a ground. Turn the key on. We now have a ground. Redo the test, and this test light now is going to do the job because inside the computer, it's a switched ground, and that ground is there. Everything worked like it was supposed to. And that bypass test, what we said is we're calling a bypass test, makes us all feel 100% confident in this ignition switch.
And something else that I mentioned in there previously was some inputs involved that this computer might need, part neutral, anti-theft. What does that tell us? What does this bypass test tell us about these other variables coming in here? That they're okay. It's not an anti-theft problem. It's not a part neutral switch problem. We have simply a bad ignition switch. Okay, just last comment for this. For those of you that are going to watch this at a later point in time, there's one other video I want to refer you to that's a similar type situation where we're checking where we're checking power feed here and power feed here but in this particular video we have a grounding issue and so I just want to refer you to so I just want to refer you to this video and it is the title is no no crank no start testing and I want you guys to to watch this one